stirring message that Brother Perry gave us just then from the Word of God. How true it is that we limit God and time God and He's eternal. We can't do that. So tonight we're facing something else now, is a, a communion. Three years I waited for a church to come in Tucson, but it's here. <laughs> we're, we're here, so we thank the Lord. He just let us wait till we can appreciate it now. Now, there's one thing that I want to say just before we start the communion is this, that I believe that we have seen enough in our day that we live in that we ought to really give every, all of our being to God. We, we should really serve God. I believe that he has blessed us with the direct uh, answer to scripture as Brother Perry gave it a few moments ago. That we we are we're at that time we're not blind we we, we see that we're here we we've arrived and uh, we also can look around and see that the way that the human mind is leading the people that we we can't stay too much longer we've been a complete insane institution the whole world would be see so we we're at the end time now as Brother Perry ended up there seeing these things are true. See that they are true. They're not myth. They're not just something that we imagine. There's something that's been directly given to us by the Word of God and manifested publicly before us. That we know we are here. We, we don't know how long now because, again, we come back to a watch, you see, what time it is. But we, are, we know we, we've here, we're at the time. Whether God's time, I'd imagine someone give a little analysis one time that said that if God put up with him, uh, according, if he was to lot time, one, one thousand years is just one day. So if a man lived seventy years old, it would just be a few minutes of God's time. Right. See? Well, if it said to be forty years, that wouldn't even mean time where he could bat his eye. See? It just, that's how quick it is, the whole thing is, if it be allotted time, which he doesn't have any time. So he's just... He's eternal. I believe it was Sarah back there. I remember Joseph the other night said to me, Brother Perry, he said, Daddy, where, when did God come on the scene? Where did he come from? See? Uh, he had to have a beginning, didn't he? Didn't he have to start? I said, no. Anything that has a beginning has an end. Right. But it's that which had not a beginning has no end. Well, of course, he's 10 years old. That was kind of a, a real mouthful for him. See, and How could he receive that knowing that something never did begin? Not only to him, it is to me. <laughs> See, it's a great big dose for me. How did it ever begin? Now, we're fixing to observe something here that's really sacred. I was called on a few days ago to some very fine Christian gentleman that, uh, that's never had this, and he understood that we'd taken communion, literally. They take it, what they call, spiritual communion. And uh, which, uh, as far as communion, I'd say, all right, because communicate is to talk to, see. And the brother gave me this scripture, said, Brother Graham, don't you think now, the uh, reason I'm saying this is sorry, right, Brother Perry, see, that reason I'm saying this so that you would understand what you're doing. You don't, if you walk in anything blindly, you don't know what you're doing. You can't have even confidence if you don't know what you're doing. But you must understand what you are doing and why you're doing it. He said, now, if we take the Word of God, isn't that the God that we're taking? I said, exactly right, sir. It's true. But we read here that they actually, Paul taught taking the literal Lord's Supper. This do in remembrance of me, said Jesus. As often as you take it in remembrance of me, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes. See? Now, we are to take it. We understand that St. Paul, who ordained it in the church, being the prophet of the New Testament, uh, Peter, James, John, all of them, they wrote uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, what Jesus did as scribes. But Paul set the thing in order. He was, a, a, he was the prophet of the New Testament. Just as Moses went into the wilderness to receive the inspiration to write the, the five books of, uh, of the first five books of the Bible, while Paul also went into the desert 
and received inspiration from God to set the New Testament church in order and type it with the old. Under there, they had the sacrificial lamb. And Israel kept that for a memorial. It was actually used one time, coming out of Egypt. But then they kept that as a memorial all down to the age. Well, the law being a shadow of things to come, you see. Now, I do believe that communion, or what we call communion now, is the, to- is the Lord's Supper. Now, we only have three physical divine orders left to us. One of them is, is communion, feet washing, water baptism. That's the only three things. That's the perfection of the three. See? Is that's the only three orders we have. We realize that that was the issue given by St. Paul in the New Testament. Now, if we would say the communion should just be taken the word. I don't believe anyone has a right to take the Lord's Supper until he's taken the, the word of the Lord into his heart. See? Because I'm go- I'll read something for you in a few moments and you'll see. Now, notice. Then, why then would we, we would, on the same basis, we could absolutely justify the Salvation Army? They do not believe in any form of water baptism. Said we don't need it. Now, if we don't need water baptism, why are we baptized? Said, well, water can't save you, the blood saves you. I'll agree with that. Amen. Right, that's right, the blood saves you, not the water. But we must take the water as an outward emotion that an inward work of grace has been done. Amen. So must we own communion. When we have taken the Lord, our sacrifice, into us as a matter of spiritual birth into us and his body we live by him by the word we also should symbolize it because it's a commandment repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins paul said i have received of the lord that which i also delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night which is betrayed took bread and break it and gave it to the disciples and and said take and eat this do uh, and remember to me, for as often as you take this bread, you show forth his death till he comes. Now, we find out that in that, they had people who come, and this uh, precious brother, very dear brother, he came and he said, I never, I never did take it, Brother Graham. I don't understand what it is. I've been taught the other side. I said, but remember, we will admit that St. Paul set it in order in the early Christian church. They went from church from house to house, broke the bread with singles for heart, and so forth. Now, I said he did put it in the church. Galatians 1.8, he said, if an angel from heaven comes and says anything else, let it be accursed. You see? Amen. And the same one had him be rebaptized again from the uh, baptism of John to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, there are three things that we must, three things that we must do as symbols. Lord's Supper, feet washing, Water baptism. See, there's, he said, well, the, now the uh, Salvation Army takes it from the point the dying thief. When he died, he wasn't baptized yet. Jesus said he'd be in heaven. That's exactly the truth. That's exactly. But you see, he, he, he only recognized Jesus right there in the hour he was dying. See, that's the only, that's the only opportunity he had. He, he's a thief. He's a way. He's out. And he, uh, as soon as he seen that life, he recognized it. Lord, remember me. And Jesus, that was true. But to you and I, who know that we should be baptized and refuse to do it, then that will be between you and God. Amen. Same thing in communion. Now, when we take this communion, it isn't just the thing that I've come up here and go to eat some bread and I believe I'm a Christian. But if you notice, the Bible said, He that eateth and drinketh unworthily shall be guilty of the blood and the body of the Lord. You've got to live a life that, that uh, uh, before the people that, and before God and the people that shows that you are, that you are sincere. Uh, just a moment longer. Now, in the Old Testament, when the sacrifice was uh, made a, um, a statue or an ordinance, and so is water baptism an ordinance, so is feet washing an ordinance. So is the Lord's Supper an ordinance. Blessed is he who does all of his ordinance, keeps all of his statutes, all of his commandments, that he might have a right to enter into the tree of life. Now, notice in this now, that in that first, 
when it was first an ordinance of God to bring a sacrifice to the church and uh, to the temple and uh, the altar and offer your gift and uh, for your sins, the sacrifice of a lamb. Well, I can just imagine seeing some Jewish uh, brother coming down the road knowing that he was guilty and he goes to the altar or brings his fat ox, uh, a bullock or whatever he had, a ram, lamb, something he brought it down the road just as sincere as he could come. He walked up there keeping God's ordinance just as sincerely as he could. Then he laid his hands up on it, confessing his sins, and the priest placing this his sins upon the lamb, and the lamb's throat was cut, and, uh, and then died for him. As he laid there, the little lamb kicking and bleeding, his hands being full of blood and flying all over him, the little lamb blatant dying, he would realize that he had sinned and something had to die in his place. Therefore, he was offering this lamb's death for his death. The, the lamb died in his place. Then a man done it with sincerity, with deepness of his heart. Finally, over and over it went again. Over and over it kept going until finally it became a tradition. The commandment of God became a tradition to the people. And then here he come down, well, let's see, this is so-and-so day. Maybe I better go down. Yeah, I better offer a, a bullock. He went down, well, Lord, here's my bullock. See, there's no sincerity in it. There's no understanding to it. Now, we don't want to take communion like that. That's the same thing as we come to the Lord's table. Isaiah uh, 35, no, I beg your pardon, Isaiah 60. Uh, let me take that back. I, I, I believe it's Isaiah 28. That's where we find this. I'm pretty sure that's the right chapter. He said, precept must be upon precept, and line upon line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Hold fast to that. What's good? For stammer lips and other tongues will I speak to this people, and this is the rest. He said, all the tables of the Lord has become full of vomit. Who can I teach doctrine? Who can I make to understand? See? I think that was the right scripture, uh, Isaiah 20. Who can I make understand doctrine? See, the tables. Now we find out today that this great thing that we're fixing to do tonight in commemoration of his death and his body that we believe that we eat daily or just got through eating as our brother preached to us. Taking the word of God. We believe it with all of our heart. We see it manifested. We see it given to us. We see it vindicated. We feel it in our lives. And we must come to this with a deep conscience of what we're doing. Not just because it's an order. You go into church and many times they get out an old soda cracker or some kind of a, or something, break it up and uh, light bread or, or something and, and break it up and people who smoke, drink, everything else because they're a member of the church, they come and take the Lord's Supper. Well, that's filthiness before God. Even the sacrifice that your holy days and your sacrifice become a stench in my nose. Yet he ordained them to make that sacrifice, but the way they treated it, it become a stench, stink in his nose, his nostrils, the very sacrifice that he ordained. That's the way we take the word of God. Too many Christians today so-called does that. We stand up here and teach this word and say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and teach the things that he promised us that he would honor and say, oh, well, that was for something else. Our solemn worships have become a stink in his nose. He will not receive it by no means. That's reason by our traditional habits. You don't take the Lord's Supper by tradition. You take it because it's the love of God in your heart and keeping the commandments of God. See, that's what you take it for. So if you don't take it in sincerity, just as a tradition, well, our church observes communion once every Sunday or once every month or twice a year. And you go up and say, well, it's my time, and I'm going to take the communion. Why? It's a stink to God, see. That's just a tradition. Even like anything else, you, you've got to be sincere. God wants the depths of your heart. You remember the very God that brought you here on earth is the one you're serving. Yeah. You're doing this because he said so, because it's his order. Then we want to come up with deepness, 
sincerity, knowing that by God's grace that we have been saved and we, we love him and we feel his presence and we, we sit, uh, change our lives, our, our, our whole being is changed. We, we, we're different people. We don't live like we used to. We don't think like we used to. Like in the book here, and um, a spot there was talked about the, the two books being one, the book of life. The first book of life coming up was when you were born. That was your natural birth. See? But then, one time, way back down in there, there was a little grain of life, as I was explaining to some of the young sisters at the house this afternoon. See, there's a little grain of life laying there that you'd wonder, where did it come from? What, uh, what these strange things? A saying is taken for myself, like it's going to say, William Branham. Well, 40 years ago, the William Branham, uh, this is the same one tonight. But somebody back there would say, William Branham, he was a rank rascal. See? Because I was born of Charles and Ella Branham. In that nature, I was a sinner. I came to the world a liar. And all the habits of the world laid right in me. But down in there, too, was another nature present. Predestinated is in there by God. In this same body, two natures in there. Well, I only cater to one. Is it growed? I good as the baby that I first thing you know, I become a liar, become everything else. That's a sinner because I raised up that way. But down in there was a little speck of life all the time. I used to remember as a little boy. I hope I'm not holding it too long. But going, uh, sitting out in the, uh, on, on the creek bank, I sit there and look around at night time. Pop and mom, they're gone on out to their rest. And uh, them days they were sinners. There's no Christianity in our homes at all. And all my drinking and parties and carrying on, it made me sick. I'd take my my lantern and my dog and go up the woods to stay all night. In the winter time, I'd hunt. Till the party was over, maybe daylight in the morning. Come home, wouldn't be over. I'd lay on top of a shed and sleep, waiting for daylight to break. Then I'd think of uh, how the times, then being out there in the summertime, get my uh, sticks and put it down for a little wind break, or if it rained, lay there and have the pole sticking in the water, fishing, my old coon dog laying there. I'd say, looky here. You know, Last winter, I camped right here one night. I built a fire right here when I was waiting for my old dog here to, to tree. And uh, I had a fire here. It was froze five inches deep in the ground. That little flower, where did you come from? Well, and where did you come from? Who came out here and planted you? And what hot house did they bring you out of? Or, or what about? Where did you come from? See? That little fire, I say, well, it was frozen, everything, and I built a fire on top here. Besides the freezing uh, element, there was a heat element laying here on the big old log where I burned here. And yet, here you are, you're alive. Amen. Where'd you come from? What was it? There was another William Brand. Okay? A little spot of eternal life down there from the, the, the genes of God. The Word of God that was placed in there. Each one of you can think of similar things. It was working. Now look up to the trees. I think, Lee, I've seen you fall off last year. And why are you back there again? Where did you come from? What brought you here? See? It was that eternal life working in the body. Now, then one day, as I walked on, that boy's talking, don't never smoke, drink, so forth. And the young fellows, and I got older, see, there was something moving. But yet, all at once, I looked up and I said, I'm not the son of Charles and Ella Brown. There's something calling, like my little eagle. I'm not a chicken. There's something up yonder somewhere. Oh, great Jehovah, whoever you are. Open up. I want to come home. There's something in me calling. Then I was born again. That little life was laying there. The life of water was poured up on it. Then it began to grow. Now, that old life was forgiven. 
but in the sea of God's forgiveness to never be remembered against me no more. See? Now, we stand justified as though we never had sinned in the presence of God. Then when we come to the Lord's table, we must come in reverence, love, and respect. But look where we would have been if it hadn't been for Him. Look where it would have been. Therefore, Paul, I think, in sin is, Wherefore, when you come together to eat, tarry one for the other. That is, in other words, just wait a few minutes. Pray. Check yourself out. And if you know a brother's in there just about to do something that's wrong or something, uh, and you pray for him, too. See, see uh, tarry one the other. Wait just a minute. Pray. If there's any feelings between you or something, don't, don't, do, don't do it. Go make that right first. See, go straighten that up first, because we want to come here just as pure as we can be in our thoughts of one another and to God and to each other, and then we come in fellowship around the table of the Lord. See, and we do this because that we are giving thanks to Him and among one another, eating the bread between each other, drinking the wine between each other as His blood and His flesh. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. See? You see, that's what the Bible says. Except you do it, there's no life in you. You see, you are then more or less showing you are ashamed to identify yourself as a Christian because of the life that you live. And then this is really the showdown. Then if you don't do it, you have no life. If you do do it unworthily, you're guilty of the body of the Lord. Same thing in water baptism. If we say, we believe on Jesus Christ, He saved us from sin, and we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, while we bring, we bring disgrace to Him, we do the things that's wrong, and we, we have to pay for that. And another thing, uh, when we do that, we are trying to profess one thing and do another. That's the trouble of us today. What I think, I'm saying us, me, and the church that the Lord God has let me speak to in these last hours, that we believe we're in the closing time. We believe that God has given us a message. It's been ordained of God. It's been proven of God. It's been showed of God. Now we must come to Him with reverence and with love and with with the purity of heart and mind and soul. You know, the hour will soon arise when, when right among us will be the Holy Spirit will speak out like it did in Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. Amen. See? Amen. That hour is arriving. Amen. See? And we are... Now, you just remember that. See? The God is going to dwell among His people. That's what he wants to do now. We can receive the message as saying, if I was a young man and hunting for a wife and I could find a wife, I said, she's just perfect. She's a Christian. She's a lady. She's all this. I've got confidence. No matter how much confidence, how much I think she's nice, I've got to receive her. She's got to receive me. See? Upon these vows. Well, it's the same thing we find in the message. We see it's right. We see God vindicates it's right. It's perfectly right. Year after year, year after year, continues right, continues right. Everything it says happens just exactly the way He said. Now we know it's right, but see, don't do it from an intellectual standpoint. If you do, you've got a second-handed religion. Hmm? We don't want a second-handed religion. Something that somebody else has experienced, and, and we are living off of, of their testimony. As I believe it was Jesus said to Pilate uh, uh, something, a word I was thinking, of. he said there just a few moments ago, uh, who told you that or was it revealed to you? How did you know these things? In other words, I don't know just what the word is now. It's been a long time since I read, but how did you, how did you know this? What, how, who revealed this to you about him being the Son of God? Who revealed it to you? Did some man uh, tell you that? Or... As Jesus said, is it my Father in heaven which has revealed it to you? See? See? How did you learn it? A second hand or is it a perfect revelation from God? 
Is this communion just something I go up for? Or say, well, the rest of them take this, I will too. It's a revelation. Amen. That I'm part of him and I'm part of you. And I love you and I love him. And we're taking this together as a symbol of our love to God and our love and fellowship to one another. Now, I want to read some from the scripture and then... I guess whichever way Brother Perry desires today. I wish you'd read it with me if you got your Bible. First Corinthians, the, uh, the 11th chapter, and begin with the 23rd verse. And then also, at our tabernacle, we've always observed this and feet washing. Always. Because they go hand in hand together. I believe the brother announced it Wednesday night because of the crowds and you don't have enough to... A room to get the people in for feet washing. We're going to observe, observe this Wednesday night. Now, 23rd verse of the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Listen to Paul now. Now, remember, keep this in mind. Galatians 1.8. If we are an angel from heaven preaches any other gospel unto you than this gospel that he had preached, let him be accursed. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it, said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now let me stop right here to say, but taking the body of the Lord Jesus Christ in this communion does not mean that that communion is the literal body of Christ. That's Catholic. I do not believe uh, that's right. I believe it's only a, an ordinance that God made with us. Right. It isn't an actual body. It's, not, it's really a little piece of kosher bread. Right. It's just an ordinance. Neither do I believe that the baptism of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in water does forgive your sins. I do not believe it. I believe you can be baptized all day long. Now, I know that there's perhaps people sitting here who come from the Apostolic Church, I mean uh, the United Pentecostal Church, which they teach that. But you see, uh, I do not believe that the water forgives sins, or if it was, then Jesus died in vain. See? I believe that it's only an ordinance of God, see, to show that you have been forgiven. But to be baptized for regeneration, no, I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that water forgives sins. Neither do I believe that this bread and, and wine has anything to do with you only keeping an ordinance that God has ordained for us to do. See? That's why I believe water baptism is the same thing. I believe it's compelling to us to do it. That he had done it all for our example, and he done this for our example. And he washed feet for our example. Now... After the same manner also, 25th verse, after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft, remember now, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew forth the Lord's death until he comes. How long? Until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let me stop just a minute. The reason he said this, you notice in another verse here, another chapter, that he said, I understand when you, when you come together, you're eating, even getting drunk at the Lord's table. They misunderstood it, you see. They just gluttoned in. See, just like people are doing today, just live any kind of life and take it. See? He said, you've got homes to eat in. See? But this is an ordinance that we should keep, see? Now, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. What are you? You're a Christian. Amen. You live before everybody as a Christian. 
And if you take that and don't live as a Christian, you're not discerning the Lord's body. You're putting a stumbling block in somebody else's way, see? As they see you trying to do that, and they're not living what you're supposed to live, see? You're not discerning the Lord's body. Now, watch what it, what's the curse of it is. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many are asleep. The right translation of that word, Brother Perry, is dead. Yeah, right. yeah. See? Many are dead. For if we... For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. That's right. If we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. See? Not any attached to the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for the other. See? And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. See? Now, in other words, don't just come to take it as a, as I said a while ago about what the Jews, their sacrifice, they, it was wonderful, it's given by God. But it got to a place where they didn't do it in sincerity and in reverence and in order, then it become just a, it become a, a stench in his nose. Now, the same thing is by our coming to take the Lord's Supper. Amen. That we must come knowing what we are doing. Just like when you go into the water to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you know what you're doing. You're putting on to the church what God has put in you, Christ. When we take this, it shows to the church that I believe every word of God. I believe that He is the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. I believe every word that He says is the truth. And I live by to the best of my knowledge, God being my judge. Therefore, before my brothers, before my sisters, I, I do not swear, I do not curse, I do not do these things, because I love the Lord, and the Lord knows and bears me record. Therefore, before you, I take the parcel of His body to know that I'm not condemned with the world. See, there you are. Then it's a blessing. And remember, I could give many testimonies on this where I've tucked that and explained it in a sick room. That's right. And seen it healed. That's right. Remember, when Israel taken the type of this, they journeyed 40 years in the wilderness and their clothes never even wore out and they come out without one feeble among, uh, one among them with two million people. As a type of this, well, what would the antitype do? If the body of a sacrificial animal did that for them, what would the body of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, do for us? Let us be reverent when we come. Let us be just as reverent as we know how to come.